Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, so as Jasmine said, this is going to be talking about uh, driving holiday traffic to your site, but we also do our traditional roasting of the different elements and design features of the sites. Um, so we'll just go through our hosts. So Jasmine, um, you can introduce yourself, Jasmine, actually, you can give yourself a uh, little bit of background. I have background, background <laughs> in creativity and design outside the matrix of digital world. And then I got into the matrix of the digital world. Um, and so I try and bring kind of a holistic approach from what the experience of the user is from outside as to what it is online to when they actually receive their physical object or what the promise is of the brand throughout all of those stages. And where Jasmine is more on the creative side, I tend to be more on, oh, actually, um, Terrence was going to be part of this roast, but uh, he's not attending, I am. So I'll do a quick intro for myself, uh, Anthony McGregor Day. I am I am the director of e-commerce here at Bluefish. And where Jasmine's more on the creative side and the user experience side, I focus more on the tech um, and especially the marketing technologies that are on sites. We look at the user experience through marketing, but also website design, website functionality. Um, and today we'll be roasting uh, a site that was served up to us by somebody uh, who we know. I'm going to get that up now, bear with me. I'm just gonna exit out and share the site that we're roasting today. Let me go over to a different tab here. It's the problem when you're sharing the slides and sharing the screen share, you have to exit out. Thanks, Zoom. Yeah, we're really lucky because um, this site was just suggested to us um, by someone in you know, our circle of influence. And it is not an unsophisticated site it is actually quite sophisticated mm -hmm, and quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should start from the top. Let's start at the Yeah, top. sure. Let's start us off. So we usually start at the homepage for our roasts. Um, the data shows for most e-commerce sites, the homepage is not the highest entered page on the website, as in it's not usually the highest traffic landing page compared to the aggregate of say your product detail pages or your category pages. But a lot of people still invest a lot of energy into their homepage. We like to say the homepage is validation. If someone's come to your site through organic search or through an ad that you're running, they're probably coming to a PDP or a category page, but they're going to click back to your homepage at some point to see, is this a real company? What are they about? And so the homepage is really that showroom for your brand. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine has this, has this stacking up as a homepage. Oh my opinion. gosh, this is so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, my favorite thing about this company so far is that they are paying attention to design and photography mm -hmm. and why is that mm -hmm. important? Mm -hmm. Well, to mm -hmm. me, it shows that they believe in the detail of the product all the way through because they have so clearly handcrafted these products mm -hmm. that are gorgeous mm -hmm. little jewels. They've taken the time to also make sure that I, as the user, can see in great detail how beautiful they truly are. So my appreciation level is higher. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. I see a really high price point, I, you know, I'm more willing to give that a try because I'm seeing the value already. I'm seeing the attention to detail already. So I know that when I actually get to the eating of the chocolate piece, I'm pretty much guaranteed a very uh, high level, pristine experience. Something but I agree with Jasmine on, on the there is the, the photography you use, it's, it's really indicative of the quality of your product. A lot of shoppers these days, they're going to be judging the quality of the product or service they get from you by the quality um, of your website. So if images are broken, it's slow to load, that's maybe reflective of your service. The fact that they, as Jasmine said, have invested a lot in their photography and made the products really pop. It just shows they have a lot of pride in their product as well. And your shoppers will pick up on those details. So definitely invest in your product photography. Even if you're a boring B2B site that just sells filters, having good product photography is a strong differentiator between you and a competitor. And I know mm -hmm. in the chocolate business, it's very competitive, very high margins usually. and one of the main differentiators is going to be that you're selling a premium product compared to another as just as one said yeah um, i mean it's pretty hard on a food thing and actually if you go up just a little bit anthony see this mm -hmm. blue area they have all this color palette working with the actual product mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that's more of a lifestyle photo so i feel like if this was in my home my home would feel fresh and clean and beautiful and designered mm -hmm. and uncluttered mm -hmm. um <laughs> But it's very hard with chocolate, you know, to communicate to someone, this is so delicious, it's gonna water in your mouth because you really only have visuals to deal with. So you should make sure that your visuals communicate super high quality and beauty because that beauty then you're hoping will translate to, yeah, this is not just gonna be mm -hmm. some chalky, terrible chocolate experience. Um, oh, you know what I forgot, Jason? Holiday roast, yeah, what? I forgot to look at the tech stack, but you keep going oh, for a second well, and then we'll look at the, yeah, you my, my favorite bit. The tech. Yeah. Oh. This, has, this page has a lot of Easter eggs to check out. Um, but one of the things I'm not seeing here is any mention of an upcoming Black Friday sale. So mm -hmm. like, 
I would be, if I was shopping, like maybe I have to get something for my boss or my friend or my baby shower. Um, so I might get it anyway, but you know, if, if I have a time sensitive purchase, I'm going to make that purchase anyway, but it'd be nice to know that there's a black Friday sale coming up mm -hmm. because maybe I want to get gifts for people in the office, especially in this time when I can just mail them out, you know, and, and give me a reason to come back. Cause mm -hmm. I might be not be thinking about black Friday now, but when black Friday hits, you want me to remember, Hey, that chocolate company, they were having a sale. I'm going to go check it out. And again, I feel like these gift purchases are probably time sensitive. So you're not doing yourself a lot of damage by advertising in advance that you have a Black Friday sale coming up. And again, even if they're not time sensitive, people when they shop for Black Friday often make a lot of extra purchases that were not necessarily planned for because of the right. savings. So your cart value is going to go up anyway. So don't live in fear. Don't live in fear. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jess makes a good point as well. One thing you can leverage during the holiday season that is not as effective year round is the idea of gift cards. If your site supports gift cards in some concept, you could be offering the shopper right now who's on your site, a if they buy $100 worth of product, you'll give them a $10 gift card to give to a friend. And that's really the benefit of that type of offer for the holiday season is that you're still potentially, essentially giving someone $10 off but instead of giving them $10 off their order through a pop-up, you might be able to say to them, hey, if you buy $100 worth of product, we'll give you a $10 gift card to share with your friend. You could even send the gift card to your friend at mm -hmm. the end of your purchase. Great way to not only leverage the holiday sale to drive more traffic, but I also mean, or to- just send them another little tiny piece of chocolate that just says like, you know, thanks for thinking of us and passing yeah. us on to your friends. Like for every $100, yeah. you get another little- Another kiss, box of chocolate kiss. to send to your friends. Yeah. Just a little, yeah. little kiss, you know? Let's uh, let's take a look at the tech stack though. This is my favorite bit. Um, I like to use built with as a way to look at what is running on the site. And the reason why we look at what's running on the site, it typically gives us an idea of how sophisticated the site might be, what technologies we're dealing with will help us inform things like design, functionality of the site, even the advertising. So Maggie Louise, when we look at the tech stack, there's a lot going on here. And frankly, I was surprised when we first looked at the tech stack. I'm like, can Not, you zoom in on all this stuff? Like, uh, I've never I can seen actually, a list like I this. can, I can, hang on. Uh, actually, that widget does not zoom in. That widget is not scaling. No, but um, <clears throat> when you think about a chocolate site, definitely they're gonna have to be spending a lot of money on advertising. It's a very competitive space and the mm -hmm. uh, brands are the biggest sparks win. However- And this is a high expecting... price point chocolate. This it, is not a cheap chocolate. Yeah. So it's a premium That's chocolate. sophisticated. But if you look at the technologies on here, they've got mix panel, sidecar, Optimizely, um, <clears throat> Rapleaf, Live Ramp. These are all pretty advanced uh, marketing technologies that usually have to have pretty deep pockets or big budgets to afford. However, if you look at the trend here, a lot of these technologies were cut off in off. 2018. I'm not sure uh, what the story is there, Usually when we see hmm. something like this, it could be because there was a marketing team there before that maybe spent a lot of money and didn't get good results, or maybe they changed the site. Maybe the, the business changed hands. Maybe a there could be a lot of came in. different agency. Yeah. But even media map, that's a really surprising uh, ad network type to see on a site like this. Uh, going down further, we know they're on Shopify. You can usually tell that by the design. Shopify is a great uh, e-commerce platform. We're, we're big fans of Shopify. They use Olark for live chat, another great little tool for live chat. One of the reasons why we like Olark is it has a lot of API functionality. So you can make it do a lot more than maybe some of the other chat tools that might be out there. Um, <clears throat> nothing else much to see in the tech stack, just that they have invested a lot in advertising in the past and they have got uh, optimized on their site, which isn't, oh. I mean, just for kicks, can you like yeah. drop it like it's a rock and just go slowly down the whole thing and see, see how sure. far this tunnel goes? You know, There's like a... when you're a kid and you just throw it off the cliff, <laughs> like this is intense. <laughs> There's a lot this of technology. Yeah. So that also tells me potentially if the team's not big enough uh, to be managing all those technologies, that there might be some issues in how those platforms talk to each other. We've seen a lot as techno marketing technologies proliferate in this space. There's a lot of data that gets siloed into one platform or another, which could be creating a, a, a disjointed user experience. Maybe mm. it's platform doesn't know what the marketing platform is doing but we're going to dive into a category page because you know what i just noticed is and like i'm going to go on yeah they are doing a holiday thing with their kind of they very are. fall like you, the you autumn. That, like with the fall yeah. leaves in the autumn now i mean they, they might do. want to say like oh no we are doing a holiday thing but i'd be like yeah that's sort of seasonal like that's just kind of like september october november that's not like black friday holiday um, there's, there's a, this, this is a holiday theme. There's a Christmas holiday. This here. is holiday, and yeah. 
this is what it, this is what we call a category page. It's usually listing a group of products together under a similar theme. I have an opinion about category pages. They do become a destination for a lot of um, your traffic. And you really want to be treating it as a landing page as well. So I'd love to see on this category page and on the rest, uh, a bit of an intro text at the top. Why, why is this a holiday collection? What does that even mean from a contextual perspective? Some copy around, um, these are the best chocolates to buy during the holidays for your friends and family. Why not oh, pick yeah. up or take a box to Thanksgiving dinner or, or something like that? I'd be like, Just, the holidays are here. It's time to circle up all of our luscious <laughs> yummies for our friends and family. Like, there you go. Make it yeah. personal. Like, take it home. Like, it's been a hard year. 2020 has been difficult. Let's take it home. Like, Cheers to the new we year. Need a, there you go. We need a hug from our families and we might not get it, but, you know, chocolate will hug you. So maybe you can write it like that. <laughs> a sticky chocolatey hug. Uh, yeah, totally. but Jasmine, you, you had some other opinions on the, the collection or the category pages as well, whereas I'd like to have a lot at the top. You you had said that you like some Well, let's more define minimal. a lot. You know, like some yeah. people get a little heavy with their category pages and they get like mm -hmm. a newspaper mm -hmm. heading and they get a lot of stuff and you never find the product. So you yes, have to scroll. If you have to scroll below the fold to see your product on the category page, you Ooh, probably got too losing. much content there. Yeah. 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 So I'm looking for a balance, like a a thesis statement line that kind of captures something between what Anthony and I were saying. Maybe there's a little bit of a flourish, you know. Maybe not. Maybe it is just a little mm -hmm. bit of a thesis statement line to to introduce you, to get you excited, to remind you why you're here, to remind you, you know, throw in a few buzzwords like coworker, neighbor, or dog walker, or postal service person, mm -hmm. someone like you're like, oh, I hadn't thought of buying a gift for X person, put it mm -hmm. on their radar, make them shop for more things, give them ideas about like, you know, no matter who you're shopping for this season, blah, 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 you know, this kind of stuff so that they are mm -hmm. thinking about outreach in their own circle, which would hopefully drive more cart value for you. Hey, Jasmine. What? I want you to do <gasps> something and the rest of the audience as well. I just noticed Wait, something. I saw it. Just, well, not even, I think I know what you saw, but just stare at the screen for a minute. Uh -huh. If you look carefully, it almost looks like you maybe took some magic mushrooms or something. Is it just me or are all the little boxes moving a tiny bit? Oh okay, now I'm tripping out God. too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I hadn't even noticed that until just then. What Jasmine was coming on before, we noticed the rollover, right? So this is a really nice effect on e-commerce sites and we're big fans of making your products interactive with some sort of change of state when the mouse moves over it because it gets people's attention and right. it is different to the rest of the sites but it also actually has a really strong psychological effect of if i have made something happen through my actions i'm more likely to remember it than if something didn't happen or if it happened organically not through my actions so the simple act of me rolling over and it moving or popping like it is with the shop now it does have a stronger effect of helping me remember the product because it, it's, it, it stands more out. more immersive. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine, and you I, said something about your, yeah, go on, your child, childhood, well, right? Well, as yeah. children are growing up, when they first, they reach this stage where they start interacting with their environment and shapes and colors and actual things start to happen. They start to understand gravity. So then they start knocking things over and they see this, this reaction. There's huge psychological stimulation um, and dopamine rush of being able to interact with your surroundings. And so what you're doing here with the web is you're creating an interactive environment and a lot of gamification, like a lot of gaming technology likes to study this as well, is when mm -hmm. you like click that button and you get the ring and all the coins fall out of the air, you know, like this is a big problem <laughs> with gambling apps. Yeah, uh -huh. so if you can uh -huh. add a little bit of these gamification flourishes, um, you can really hook people for longer. I don't know about this whole lightly floating somewhat. Yeah, it's disconcerting thing. a little it's bit. I would say much. if it's you were B2B subtle. and you had a lot of products on the page, if these were closer together, you wouldn't want this much animation happening to the user. I, well, I'd either it's, do it for real. So it's very mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, we're all floaty and magical or don't do it all. Cause this is right on the edge of I'm having an aneurysm. Too much, yeah. And don't go back <laughs> no, to- it's just, don't go... it's just enough that psychologically I'm like, eh, is it me? I think it's me. Like, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. Like I said, if I take a mushroom, mushroom really with those that mushroom omelet I had for breakfast. They, uh, <laughs> let's drill down to our product uh, detail I mean, page and we can take a quick look here. Uh, so immediately knee jerk reactions to the product detail page. Jasmine, go. Oh, we haven't looked at this one. Um, this I like better than the other product detail page uh -huh. we looked at because at the top here, we don't have mm -hmm. tabs because they okay. were able to fit everything that I need in that section of what's in the box. 
And when um, you're referring to the other product page, I think when the site loaded, we were looking at one briefly. Um, we were looking at under gift yeah. sets and it was the lipstick okay. box gift set. Right, right. Yeah. Let me go there so we can see the comparison gift sets. Uh, these ones. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. So what's interesting is they have two different PDP pages here. So you have one that has multiple tabs with very small clips of information, or in the other one, we had all the information in one block. And um, typically, like I was talking with Anthony earlier, like when you have lots of in-depth information that some customers require, for instance, with supplements or anything that they need to research about allergies, and you have to include all this information or, or you're doing your customers a disservice, then yes, I love tabs because you're able to keep it all at the top above the fold and you, people can segment the information that they need as necessary. However, this particular instance, if you click through those tabs for us, Anthony, you can see that there's not a lot of copy in each yeah. tab. Yeah, so it, it doesn't it's really disappointing. justify yeah. the it amount sets of me up that, that I'm doing. Exactly, that's where I was going with it as well, Jasmine. You know, Which it's, is funny, it, you are asking just the click. user to do something. It's a click, but it's, it's still- It's just a click, but people energy. act like you have to put on shoes and yeah. run around the block. Like it's just a click, but seriously, like people I gotta are think about tired. It. <laughs> they gotta do other things. They don't have time for all your clicking. Like make it easy for them to give you their money. Ooh, and look, if they are gonna click, re yesterday. reward them. Reward them. What's they that? They got buy with GPay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that now. Yesterday. These are really important um, as mobile technologies just become as mainstream as they are. I, I would be very surprised to find a B two C e commerce website these days that does not have at least fifty percent traffic is mobile, and usually it's more. And a lot of sites still are not designing for mobile. This is definitely a mobile first design and it's really important to have that factor. I would make a small comment about how much they prioritize mobile first design in that their add to cart buttons and buy with GPay buttons on the e desktop page. I think they're a little big, but I'm really picking it, uh, clutching at straws here now. Yeah, Overall, they've done I know such a good job. There's almost nothing terrible to critique. I mean, the technology Private. is what, what, what do you got? Well, these buy with GPay, buy with PayPal, buy with even Amazon. Let's try buy with GPay since it wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> Let's click it. I'm not buying you a box of, box of lipstick chocolates, Jasmine. You I'm probably not should. About that. <laughs> yeah, you probably should. No, there's other ladies in the office. Yeah. Ah, there's my credit card details there. There you go. <laughs> Hi, internet. Just take a screenshot of that. You'll be How good. interesting. <laughs> so this just comes up for like that. Okay, it does. Cool. It does. And on mobile, it's even better. And, and one of the benefits of, of using these types of tools is you are making it easier for the user to transact on mobile, which is really important. I'm sure a lot of people who are watching have an iPhone. They've probably experienced Apple Pay. I have an iPhone. I haven't used Android or GPay on an Android device, but I know I will always click Apple Pay then if it's an option for me completing a transaction, because it's very seamless. I don't have to enter my credit card details. Mm -hmm. I don't even really have to go to another window to complete my transaction. I mm -hmm. click the buy with GPay button or pay with Apple Pay button. Up pops a confirmation window. I literally just look at my phone and the transaction is complete. It's very seamless. So definitely encourage you if you have that option to add these buy with buttons. And to Jasmine's point, I do feel that we have a lot, not enough copy here, which is disappointing the user. If we scroll down a bit, what else is on the PDP page? Um, oh, wow, there's a lot happening below the fold here. Um, okay, now, so this here's is- here's something yeah, we talk yeah. about, the function of the About Us page, which they do mm -hmm. not have. They do not have an About Us page, so Anthony cannot go to bed tonight and read all about them, which is what he would do, <laughs> no, and I would they're not. actually right here, right here, Jason, right there, About, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. it's just not in the header, yeah. it's in the yeah. footer. Usually- But it's not in the header. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about this header, it's all focused on selling. like. I don't like, let's not be friends. Let's buy my stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, but they are treating this PDP page with this layer of an about us at the bottom. So if you want to scroll down and you're new to the page, um, you will learn, you'll see the cross sell, but then you'll see all the about us mm -hmm. Our guarantee. Look at me. We're, you know, we're real humans. You know, we have mm -hmm. loving care and craft. I, I do love this. I would say, I'm not sure what's happening here. And if this is not happening, I would I would recommend or advise that the, the site owner does apply this. We've already stated that product detail pages should be treated as landing pages. What does that mean? It means that you have to treat your product detail page as if it was the first page someone had ever seen on your site. So it's also your first impression. The more information you can put on your product detail page that gives the user confidence, the better. This type of messaging, if it's the first time you're on the site, very valuable. The users come to this landing page mm -hmm. from organic search. They've looked through this, a little bit of copy here, not that helpful. Go a bit further. Oh, look, okay, they're made in Austin. Um, 
there's the founder, there's some more mm -hmm. credibility for me. However, if this is literally at the bottom of every product detail page, for every time I come to the site, whether I've been to the site 10 times or one time, not such a good experience at that point because it's very repetitive. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a thousand times. Well, let me ask if you, you this. Go on. Yep. If you go to a gift page, can you just buy from the gift page without having to go to the PDP and therefore you would not have to see this every single time? Maybe, but I don't know that many people that would just buy from here and not go to the PDP page. Yeah, but if you're so, already a recurring customer, you're not going to go into the PDP sure, page. Sure, sure. I mean, let me talk to you about Sephora. I don't go on the PDP page. I just go mm -hmm. add to cart, add to cart, add to cart, peace out. Like, true. So then I'm true. not getting caught up in this having to see it all because I'm never going to go there or scroll. But then there's very, people like me you know, who patient. always go to the PDP page. Oh, I, we are I will, funny. Exactly, right? I'm, all, I'm complete opposite. That's why it Jess is, and I work is. so well together. We uh, have very different opinions it on a lot of things. Work so well? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. No, so there, in the museum industry, there's this um, notation that there's people that walk through the museum, they scan the tags. And then there's people who read the tag in depth. And I, I had this conversation with Anthony and he admitted he is an in-depth tag reader. He will stand in front of the display mm -hmm. case and 100%. block your view until he's done reading the tag, which is why we had to invent audio tours so that giant Australians would move out of the way. <laughs> just scan and move on. I, yeah, sure. I, <laughs> I, do, I do a lot of the reading of the museum tags and about us pages. But where I was going with this particular design is, is I still think it's a bit too heavy at the bottom for every page all the time. If you have the option to know a user has been on your site before, maybe hide that part of the pages of the PDP pages moving forward if I've been to the site two or three times and make it accessible in the footer under the About Us section or something like that. If this is valuable information, it should be accessible elsewhere on the site. But I do love that they're showing it on a PDP page. Um, yeah, if you scroll down, did you see that winter Christmas image? I would, I would want that to be on in the rotation of the homepage instead of that fall okay. back to school, okay. September yeah, sure. looking stuff. It's time yeah, to go okay. holidays. It's yeah. time to go big. Get out your checkbooks, people. Christmas is coming. And for the home stretch, we've only got a few minutes left and we want to see if there are some questions. I'm going to go through the checkout process. This is usually where a lot of sites uh, kind of fall down. And again, one thing to consider during the Christmas holidays or during the holiday season overall, if you are expecting a spike in traffic, make sure you get a hold of your host, host, hosting provider in advance. Um, most hosting providers these days do include some sort of burst capability on your hosting. So when you do get a peak traffic during the holidays, you don't have to notify them in advance, but it's still good to check. Do you have that enabled on your plan? The last thing you want is to be getting so much traffic to your site that it mm. falls over. That's when, <laughs> that's the worst time for it to fall over. The busiest day of the year, and I can't do any transactions. Um, but let's go through the checkout experience. It's also so sad because if you come back to your digital managers and tell you that they tell them that they broke the site with too many sales, they don't sympathize. They just laugh and laugh gleefully like <laughs> evil, evil elves because that's our goal. And so we want to be sympathetic, but also we want to crush it. So to drive, yeah, drive a lot of it, traffic to the site. Uh, this looks like the standard Shopify checkout page. Don't come so to us you're not... very bad at that. We're good at that. <laughs> You broke up for me a little bit there, Jasmine. What were you saying, sorry? Oh, I was saying that if, if your marketing manager breaks your site with too much traffic, they're usually not sympathetic and we're right. sorry in advance. They're kind of proud of the effort. That's a, we're super that's proud of it. And, and we know that's bad for your business technically, but um, we're sorry in advance. So, <laughs> But it's our uh, goal. Like That's what we want to do. We want to crush it. I'm going to quickly put in some details here and just go through the final uh, checkout process. I won't complete the transaction. Um, although maybe we should, maybe that's a thing we do moving forward. Yeah, I mean, we actually buy things from the sites we're hosting. We <gasps> gotta be nice a little be, bit. That's our prize for doing these webinar hosts. Yeah. I decided. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the website's speakers. prize for us roasting their site. Um, but I'll continue to deliver. This looks like a standard Shopify checkout. I'm not seeing anything special here. Uh, I'm just going to put in my email address. Uh, sure. You can keep me up to date with news and offers continue to delivery. And I would hope that this is different on mobile. This is really nice. We've started to see a lot more of these and we love them. They are really, yes. really effective in increasing your average order value. And this is really important for a reason. The user has already validated they like your site. They have already validated they trust your brand because they're I about to- I can see anything for under $40. And now I've got a $5 option, I'm in. Right. I spent a lot of time falling in love with this brand already. 
<laughs> but at the five dollar no at a five dollar price point take my money like because everything else is 40 50 70 80 and now i'm like oh i'm gonna get at least three or four of these martini things and hand them out to my friends yep. keep them on mm -hmm. hand for those mm -hmm. random baby showers that pop up people getting pregnant you don't know no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and so this is this is nice and effective in that now if i added more to my cart it would be even more effective imagine if they're showing me here free shipping for orders over 75 dollars, and i had 71 dollars in my cart right now and here's a $5 product I can add, which basically pays for my shipping, which at the moment would have been $15. That's great, it's very effective. These are extremely effective to get increased average order values because they're at the end of the checkout, they're at the point where the person's already validated that they trust the brand. You're only asking them to give you a couple more dollars and you're making it very easy for them to do so. They don't have to think too much, they don't have to browse around the site to find another five or $10 product and get interrupted. You've inserted the products that you're recommending in the checkout flow and you're incentivizing them to add one of those products to the cart. And I like the little messaging down here. You rock teeny time. These are cute as well. Uh, That's this the is name of effective. the products. Okay, there you go. I thought it was telling me I rock. Um, and uh, okay, well, just in the last two minutes, I don't want to stop the roll, but we're open for Q&A. So if you yes. guys have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. Um, while those questions roll in, uh, Anthony, Jasmine, you can keep going. I yes. hope one of the questions is, what is Jasmine's favorite chocolate? And I'm here to say, I think it's just milk chocolate, maybe with something crunchy. So... Uh, Espresso beans, perhaps? No kidding. Make a note of that, Ben. We'll, uh, we'll, well, yeah, we'll send let's, you a gift box. Let's see what the, <laughs> the questions are going to be. Uh, I do like the including a gift message. That's always nice as well. When would you like your order delivered? That's a nice little touch. Again, if you're if you're during the holiday season, you're getting gifts. It would be great if you can actually specify when you want it delivered. Um, that's a nice little touch there. Yeah, Thanksgiving note there is really important. Uh, gift and promo code prominent here. Yeah, this is a great site. I, we will jump back to the homepage and see, Ben, do we have any questions at the moment? Not seeing any so far. Okay, um, okay. No worries. Uh, rewards and referrals, that's always a good part of the site. In general, this is a great site. I have no real difficulty saying it's a good site, that we have found very little that we can critique from a negative perspective and lots of positive components of the There's a site. lot so, of good things going on here. Yeah, Lots that lot of people can learn to check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're a chocolate perfection, you should be watching out for Maggie Louise Perfections. They have a great site, good user experience in most of the areas, um, really nice upsell on the checkout, uh, nice for product photography, nice page layouts. Probably would be nice to have a little bit more description around the PDP pages, a bit more content here. Um, and a little bit of consistency with, as Jasmine said, the tabs. And well, so and I did just say what kind of chocolate I like, but I'm not noticing if that's an option. Like, is this an all dark chocolate situation? Is this an all white chocolate situation? I, I think it's a mix. Mixed chocolate? Yeah. Are these chocolate only chocolate? Chocolate it's a mix. chocolate? <laughs> so yeah, is that one espresso chocolate? Like, is that happening? Is that a pumpkin spice latte chocolate? I need to know. I can't, I can't tell you, Jess. <laughs> I'm the girl that had the Jelly Belly box and I turn it over and read all the flavors. And I'm like, this one's pear and this one is watermelon. <laughs> Maybe we'll solve this mystery in the uh, in the next website, Rose. <laughs> but uh, I think we're at time. Up. Yeah, um, we're at 3.30. So thank you again for everybody for attending. It's always a pleasure, Anthony and Jasmine. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.